So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Wish Alliance Cosmic Conversations. I'm your host, Sheila Seppi, and tonight I'm very pleased to have Marina Serena as our special guest. I'm not going to do a big introduction of Marina because part of the introduction is the story of her life, which I really want to her to share with us in her own words. So Marina, I'm going to go ahead and turn everything over to you, and I can't wait to hear your story. Thank you so much, Sheila. I'm so glad you invited me, and I'm so excited to share my experiences with you all and my story. Um, I have really much things to share, and I'm glad I'm here again, so thank you. Uh, I actually wanted to start with how actually this started for me, because how my awakening developed is actually a perfect sample of how the information is coming right now to the planet in these times of transformation. So when I was about 50 years old, um, I was suddenly really interested in science and I became real interested in like um, occult sciences or metaphysics because I really uh, understood that there was something more to reality as we we taught to in school and actually I always have the intense desire to understand how the universe works and why we exist that's the big question right why do we exist so it was pretty magical to me because it all started as a question and it ended up uh, putting me in such, such a mission you know such a like position of like getting all these downloads about what's really going on and it was so fast that it's really fascinating it's really uh, amusing to be here on earth even if it's tough and if it's hard it's really incredible times it's um amazing and i think we are privileged souls to be in the front line because there are many good things coming forward so so yeah i started being interested about science, being interested about human evolution. And I ask things like, how does the universe work? Why do we exist? What is the course of human evolution? And why humans were the ones who really like evolved further beyond what we've seen on other species like on Earth? And so suddenly I started to get questions. And what I came to understand is that often when you get a question, that's a download coming. Because when you have a question, you also have the answer coming forward. You're actually pulling that energy to you. Like you're pulling the energy like forward and, and, and back. So, so it's kind of like you're channeling the information. So I was starting to ask myself these big questions. And I will go, you know, do my little research in YouTube, in, you know, on pages and web pages, you know, on blogs of people talking about extraterrestrial contact and the theory that we were created by the Anunnaki. And suddenly all those things started clicking on me and to activate something because when I will read those articles, I will understand that that was my home that that was like my home state of being like my na nature you know understanding all these things so i started to get that everything was a simulation that the universe is not a physical objective you know structure but rather a projection of consciousness because quantum physics that is a really interesting science that i've always been into since i was little uh tell us that there is no crystallized there's no solid like matter everything it's like a wave of quantum probability and actually we with our consciousness we manifest that which we're tuning into vibrationally so it's all like a manifestation of consciousness you know so i was starting to get all these things and actually wonder why humans evolved into what we are today because for some reason, like the evolution that I have been talked to, and we have been all talked to in school, didn't make sense to me. Because sincerely, like we as hominids, we were actually 
adapted to the environment that we were existing in. We were actually used to it and our projection forward, our, our evolution was projecting in a way, in a directionality that wasn't kind of like um, provoking all these um, genetic mutations that will put us in a state of being connect, uh, collectively of desiring to or knowing how to manipulate nature. We were actually surviving and projecting forward in our evolution to adapt ourselves to our environment, you know, in different ways, you know, like expressing more of like the um, development of natural like um, attributes of like the animals, like, you know, like nails, like longer nails and like vertebrae just like other animals. So that should have, that should have like jump that we made in terms of uh, evolution, like mental, emo emotional, physical, physiological, was no way, was just no way that it was provoked by an environmental event. Because for such a big response, such a big jump, such a big, totally, um, different uh, trajectory, trajection and projection forward. There must have been a really big life-changing um, environmental, environmental event that will also affect other species to actually evolve the same way. But why humans highlight themselves as the only species who will make that change within their evolutionary course? So that was the question that actually made me channel the information behind it and put myself forward to investigate more about it. And so I actually get to the point of understanding how we were hybridized species. We were not hominids that evolved from the apes such as we have been taught in school. And so I started to resonate with all these articles that I have been reading and all these um, videos about the Anunnaki, you know, it didn't feel like alien to me. It didn't feel like different or like crazy. There was some sort of strong familiarity around it that I felt like, boom, you know, that's it. We were just remembering, I'm remembering, like this is not something that it's new to me really. It's something that we as a species already knew and already knew back in the past. So, you know, with this um, information that I was coming uh, forward with, you know, coming to understand more, I actually activated my Kundalini and initiated that uh, process of Starseed Awakening. And well, at the beginning, of course, it was a really crazy, really, really crazy uh, path because of course, even though the information seems really natural to all of us when we get to it and we feel like we're getting home with it, we're finally remembering that which we forgot. There is challenges because those challenges are part of the process of awakening. And we know this because to bring back consciousness, we first need to get in touch with unconsciousness. That's how the mechanics of nature, of universe works, of consciousness. So it was a really traveling process because when you awake your Kundalini energy, what's happening, it's that as it ascends around like around all of your chakras, around your spine, you start to kind of like um, project negative belief systems or negative um, vibrational frequencies that you're holding onto, that you're resisting in each chakra, that it's going to express as a narrative, as a challenge in your life. And it is really powerful because it is meant to bring you really powerful energies, really powerful awareness, really powerful consciousness. So, you know, that's why many of us um, have had really traveled and um, traumatic experiences when we were awakening, when we were being activated, because it's part of it. And what I found out is that 
um, the feminine energy and the masculine energy, if we observe the Kundalini um, symbol, the symbol of the Kundalini awakening, we see the two snakes, you know, like intertwining around a straight line. And we see the, the two wings and we see a little ball in between. Well, actually, the two snakes are representing the feminine and the masculine energies because consciousness is it's dual it's a trinity because there is a balance in between the dual oh, in dual energies of masculine and feminine but the awakening it's a play of duality so to get to that balance point that hand, that um state of neutrality of integration the two energies the two dual energies of masculine and feminine like dark etc they have to play in a um, sort of dynamic of oscillation. That's why we have states of happiness, then states of depression, then states of joy, then states of, you know, again, repression. We oscillate like that. And that's actually the rhythm, the dynamics that we go forward with the process of awakening and the activation of our Kundalini. So the line, the vertical, line represents how the chakras are aligned around the spine because that's the physical expression that's the physical um geometrical expression of how many different keys many different truths many different ideas of our consciousness are projecting in a way that we can experience the idea of alignment but in a physical two-dimensional structure so actually we are powerful, for example, the chakras always tell us these different ideas that we have. We have the I am power, I am ground, which is the root chakra. We have the I am sexual, the I am creative, which is the sacral. We have the I am will, I am projection, which is the solar plexus. We have the I am love, the I am connection feelings which is the heart chakra and we have the communication the i am expression which is the throat we have the i am sight i am psychic i see which is the third eye and we have the i am universal consciousness which is the crown chakra so all of those ideas are expressed in a vertical physical expression so that we can experience the idea, the abstract concept of alignment. And they are projected in a way that it has an a below and an above because those different other abstract ideas of above and a low below also has to express itself in a way that it makes sense in space and time. So when the Kundalini energy is awakening, the masculine and the feminine energies are intertwining around this spine uh, projection of different ideas of our, our consciousness. As it ascends above, it starts to project and kind of like unlock different blockages, energetical frequency blockages that we have of our, ourselves that we have been holding on, even um, karmic or even if it's our own karma or the lineage or our own um, genetic ancestry. It's a combination of many things because we're far, more, far, far much more than our own vessels uh, no, or own uh, genetic lineages on a physical perspective. So we will always have a lot to deal with, especially in the lower chakras. So as it ascends above, then we have the two wings which represents those same dual energies, the masculine and the feminine, because they are mimicking, they're reflecting, they are made in the image of the uh, right side of the brain and the left side of the brain, which is the creative part, the feminine, you know, the extra, the meaningful, and we have then the logical, the objective, the mathematical, the masculine. So that wings, those wings represent that um, kind of like, integrated consciousness in terms of duality in terms of masculine and feminine and the small ball in between those are it's the pineal gland which is you know it's the eye that sees all it's the eye of Horus, as we know the one who holds 
the knowledge, the ancient wisdoms. And these dual spiral energies are expressed with the um, symbol of the snake, because in ancient times, the snake represented ancient wisdom, knowledge. So that's basically what I was experiencing when we experienced when we wake up and was what I was personally experiencing when my Kundalini was activated. And is that I had a lot of negative uh, belief system, negative blockages that I was uh, holding on to in my lower chakras. So that I will get all of these negative uh, attacks by uh, different um, uh, energies like entities, like uh, service to others, as we call it. I mean, service to self people and service um, kind of like uh, to others will also be helping me. But um, I was actually, when, when this happens, we're actually just expressing only our energy. We're not just, it's not like we are the victims of these people. It's not that we are in a narrative in which there is a separation between the outside and the inside. But actually there is also like a part that we need to understand and it's like um, responsibility, you know. And when, when I actually was going through these processes, of course, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of trauma there's a lot of victimization and and it is part of the process in a sense because the third dimension is what is taught is what is teaching us that we are victims in a sense but and it's it's part of the process to experience victimacy because if we if we don't do it we never get to strengthen ourselves we never get to empower ourselves so we need to understand that it is okay to feel that we're victims of something, to feel that we are disempowered, to feel that somebody is attacking us, that this is something that it's wrong, that it is not our fault and everything. But there, there must be a time, there is a time in our awakening in which we understand, as we comprehend the structure of the Kundalini, we understand that these energies are not separated beings. They're not separated from us in the sense of energy. They, were, they are our, the projection of our consciousness. It's just that there is a play of duality of victim abuser when we are in third dimension in polarity consciousness because that's part of it, as I explained. But once we empower ourselves, once we strengthen our spirit and our DNA, we start getting, we start to remember the awareness that it is our own energy. And that's when we finally get to the point of ascending, making our first step in four dimension, four density consciousness, because we understand how everything, it's really our own energy and our own belief systems projected in the outside, in a narrative or in, in a story or whatever, in the shape of whatever. But it's meant to be played with characters, with the scenarios, with backgrounds, so that we get the symbols, we get the ideas, we get the reflection of what it is that we're holding on to, what it is that we need to integrate to put that in consciousness. What are the lies that we are believing that is not true about ourselves? So what we need to do, it's exactly just be natural and then understand how we are projecting only our own energy. So, you know, those are things that, you know, comes with the Kundalini. Like first, it's the third dimensional, you know, experience of polarity, of victim abuser, of where this empower, we are victims, we are like um, in a situation of trauma, in a situation of disempowerment. But once we start trusting in our heart space when we start strengthening our DNA and understanding that it is us and only us and that we are source energy and that we hold this infinite potential and that there is a structure as to how this is presented to us that we can understand and we once we understand we have the power back to us when we have built this vibrational base, when we are ready to deal with anything, we're ready to see the structure of things and take responsibility for all these things and say, no, this is 
my energy, which doesn't mean that it is who I am, because that's the most important part of awakening of the Kundalini, to understand that, you know, um, just because something, it's our energy does not mean that it is who we are. That's the most powerful aspect of our awakening. Hey, sweetie. That we are not the lies that we experience and everything that is fear, everything that it is negative energy, everything that is experienced as a challenge, as a blockage, it's not who we truly are. It's a lie. So that's the part of integration. And when that part of integration starts to get assembled and embraced in the individual, it's when we as a species collectively will start getting what we call the third strand of the Kundalini awakening. And that third strand, that third spark intertwining energy of the two snakes intertwining, representing the masculine and the feminine, it represents that we have transcendent polarity and that we are now playing with different dynamics, which are four dimensional for density and that the third dimensional consciousness has been put back to balance. So we're no, we will no longer be third dimensional beings, but rather four dimensional beings. And that's what the awakening and the transcendence to 4D will be about. This process of integration, of attaining the third strand of, of this Kundalini energy of integration, you know. So, that's why we have been hearing a lot. We have been um, we have been really receiving a lot of misinformation about going to five D and all these sort of like new age terms, which is okay because they are also part of like our own process of learning this discernment, you know, as a spiritual beings. But that is actually a concept that it has been really uh, it's been really misleading because we're actually not going physically to the 5D. The 5D is a place in which our higher self resides. It's a place of total integration and total um, merging with our own higher self, higher mind and spirit with source energy. There's no polarity energies, but there's also no no time and space in the way that we experience here or even for density. There's no linearity, everything is here and now. And there's really no like physicality in the sense of material crystallized uh, biological vessels. That is only for beings who have just uh, uh, transcended all of the challenges to be explored in the for density. But that's actually not our next step. We're going to 5D, but not in the sense of physicality, but rather in the sense of state of being. And that's a misconception. It's not a physical five dimension. It's a spiritual five dimension. It's a place within our soul. It's a play within, within, within our consciousness. It's a vibration that we will um, emanate, that we will uh, be oscillating at, you know, not something like a physical actual place because that's the actual dimension that we go and transcend when we leave our physical bodies. And we as a species haven't yet mastered even the four density. So that's one of the misconceptions about, you know, evolution, consciousness, and, you know, the transcendence to the new earth. But it is, um, it is just a small comment going back to my story. Um, so yeah, this is what I was going, um, this is what I was going through, my Kundalini awakening, and, and I had many of these dark negative beings, um, they were attacking me, and back in the day, of course, I felt, well, these beings want to destroy me, they want to kill me, they don't want me here, there's a whole drama, like a whole battle in between, you know, light versus dark, like teams, you know, like the, the lead, the cabal versus the good beings versus the good extraterrestrial people and so at the beginning of course it was really dramatic it was really terrible because um I had no clue what was going on and I will get abducted and I I had no idea what was the hybrid program was about so I will get um 
I will get really scared. So many times I will receive beings in my room who actually wanted to uh, get me out of my body. And at that time, I felt, I thought, whoa, I've read so much negative things about archons and about, you know, service to self beings that I'm sure that these beings want something negative for me. But so when, when I was having that experience, something really magical happened. And it's that when I asked telepathically this being, what's that you are? What is that you want? What's your true nature? Are you light? Suddenly I was immersed in all this immense amount of love. And it's one of the most extraordinary uh, light feelings, um, emotions that I ever felt in my life, in my heart chakra, because it was just not normal. It was just not, it was not a normal experience. It was not a rich uh, feeling, you know, it, it was not like something mundane. It was ex extraordinary and per totally paranormal experience. And I understood that it was indeed a cosmic guide or, you know, um, ET you know, counterpart or angelic being or or even star family welcoming me to this trip of awakening and, you know, kind of like informing my heart that I was loved and there was nothing uh, wrong. There was nothing to, be, to fear or to be afraid of. So at that moment, I felt in peace. I felt like with much more strength to go forward in my heart. So I will... I will eventually start to uh, accept more of these experiences because in a sense, even though there was some resistance from my part, I understood that there was something um, kind of like positive behind it. Like there was a mission to make, you know? So we, so we started to see a lot of UFOs in my house. I mean, I remember that it wasn't just me because I could just say that they were my own, you know, projections that maybe it was just only visible to me. But actually, no, actually, I had friends and family who will also see them in the sky. And it was a really crazy experience because I will always talk about this with my friends, with my family, and they wouldn't believe me. But when they will go to the uh, terrace, I will see the UFOs and they were with me and I had witness with me that it was really happening. It was really like something that was going on that I wasn't just making up or hallucinating or something. So we were all really puzzled about who they were and what it was about. And I knew that some of them were not positive individuals. They were also negative ones, you know. So um, that's when I actually started to realized that there was something, there was like an entity, like a group of individuals that didn't want me to activate and initiate this process. And we're trying to put some more resistance to it. And I will actually start getting negative abductions in cultures of a negative kind with um, beings of a low vibration. And I will have, you know, dreams with military personnel and that's when I started to think well maybe there's some military aspect to it to this too you know not just the extraterrestrial you know uh phenomenal but also like the military phenomenon which is when I later realized that it was the secret space program so all of those things started happening at the same time more or less in 2015 to 2016 for me and so I was just really, really um, kind of like holding, I had all of the, these little pieces, but I just needed to put them together slowly, you know, tiny um, bit by bit because I didn't have much information about things that were going on. But every time that I will have a question, I will know that there was a lot download behind it. Because again, that's how we actually get downloads by having strong questions. So I started questioning myself, what are these experiences with the grace about? Why am I being abducted by the grace? Why am I being, why have uh, negative encounters with military people? So when I will ask this question, I will synchronistically 
attract in my experience events that will actually reveal the answer to me. So for example, uh, by synchronicity, I will see the word hybrid everywhere. And I will ask myself, well, what it means hybrid? Does it mean that I'm a hybrid? Does it mean that, does this mean that, I don't know, that I'm in contact with some sort of hybrids? And so by the time I had a friend who was a channeler and he will channel uh, feeling beings and returning to, and I eventually get the chance to ask them. So when I, when I ask them about why I will see the word hybrid everywhere, they will tell me that actually um, it was true that I have a hybrid component that my genetics were, were uh, altered or mutated. And at the same time that the synchronicity was telling me that I was part of the hybrid programs. And that's when I will start getting about around 2017, more of the information about the hybrid programs that I was being part of. And so, yeah, those are the times in which I will start getting the most amount of downloads and the most amount of experiences and encounters with extraterrestrials. It was, um, it was really revealing because I always knew that I have a genetic connection to the grace. And actually when I was a 14 year old person, I always thought that I looked like a little bit like them. So, so I actually understood that the beings who altered me genetically was the grace because the hybridization agenda is just not to create hybrids, but we also receive genetic information because those people are assisting us as we are assisting them because when this agenda is just not like giving and it's not just about helping an entire group of people of beings to their own challenges it's also helping us that's when we that's when i started to understand that the hybrid agenda was not something about service to self but also service to us humans because we we were projecting ourselves forward in a direction, in a timeline that was getting us to their own path, the path that they explore in their own evolution, which was the energies, the cyclic, the cycle of energies and the, the evolutionary cycles of energy of the Anunnaki, the karmic cycles of exploring the ideals of tyranny, this connection for nature, this connection from the emotions, this connection to your body and this connection eventually to their true selves as humans, because they are humans. So that's when they repeated the steps of the Anunnaki and they decided that it was no good for them, that they needed to get back to their human nature. But the only way for them to do it was to go back in time and find viable DNA, which was us. And not only was viable DNA, but it was compatible DNA because we, have similar, we have genetic uh, attributes that were projecting it themselves to this, to this similar path you know, of exploration of consciousness, of destruction. So it was just not viable in it, it was also compatible. And it was also an opportunity of not just them getting assistance, but us getting assisted so that we will not go down that path. Because if we as suspicious agree to collaborate and co-create and be part of this program, of this agenda of hybridization, of actually helping a version of us to not commit that mistake again, to make a course correction or clearing that sort of a negative path of exploration and change the direction totally for a new, better one, a totally different and better and, you know, a high vibrational one. We're actually doing the same for us because what we put out is what we get back. And when we help them, in a sense, they help us too. It's a co-creation. So that's when I understood that the way that I was hybridized was just not a coincidence or it was not just for any other hidden agenda. It was something regarding the evolution of mankind and, and it was part of a co-creation of a positive timeline for humanity. And I created a timeline in which we will not repeat the same steps of the Anunnaki that we were actually starting to commit again. So that was 
developing itself from one side. And that's when I actually experienced my first sexual encounter with what is my um, counterpart, my pleading counterpart, which is called Maiko. And the way that I realized that, that it was who it, who it was and what he wanted, what the, it was the experience about, was with another friend of mine back in the day that was actually actually experiencing something really similar, you know. So the way that we will meet is actually through that uh, same friend that we have in common, because I will express with these beings about my sexual encounters, and I will often ask, well, is are these experiences something uh, related to the highway programs, you know? And so she messaged me privately and she was a psychic um, intuitive artist. And she was also experiencing this thing, like this kind of sexual encounter with beautiful, you know, entities and extraterrestrials. And so um, she just came to me and said, hey, this is what's happening to you. I feel that you have a counterpart that is assisting you and your Kundalini awakening, and that is also um, uh, helping you, assisting you in the hybridization programs. So at that moment, um, I will make a change. Um, I will make a change of art, you know, like a trade work with her. I will make a quarter of her counterpart, and she will make one of me, as she was a channeler. And she actually get to depict this being who was what I, the, the being that I described. It was a pleading counterpart. Um, his call is Mako. And actually, um, it was really emotional to me because when I will see the, the portrait, I will be like, whoa, this is so, this is so freaking familiar. You know, like I know this person. I, I feel I have known him in person before which I eventually uh, later understood that, yes, that I've seen him when I was much younger in the ships because we were, um, I was abducted and many of us were abducted by these positive hybrid agendas, um, uh, ships like biospheres, you know, in which we eventually meet our counterparts and many of the beings who are assisting in our genetics, like the mantids and everything. So that's why, that's why it felt really familiar because we have not only we have seen each other on the biosphere already, but actually also like we have experienced many, many, many years, um, many eons of time together in different shapes and different personas, maybe, but we're the same kind of like, uh, we're like twin flames in a sense. So at that moment, um, I started to get more, um, feeling more connected to him. I'm feeling less scared of, of, um, of the idea of encountering him in an experience of, you know, uh, sexual encounters or, or, you know, abduction, like astral abduction out of body experience. And that's when in the village, when I was one night, I was going to fall asleep. I remember that, I was becoming paralyzed and suddenly I felt that I might be an attack. I mean, I might get an attack because I was again, really resisting of all these encounters. I was just discerning because I also have the negative part of this awakening process, which is the military beings. So I actually um, release all negative um, feelings or judgments about the experience and I was actually uh, experienced a surge of sexual energy. And I, at the same time, I will experience an awakening of my heart chakra. And that's the moment that I felt like it was, that I knew that it was him because it was like so intense, like the, no, the knowing that it is, that his energy was present, that it was not a threat, that it was like, a co-creative experience, you know, like a positive encounter. It was so certain, it was so familiar, the frequency, that there was just no doubt that I didn't have no need to see him physically to know that it was him. And that's actually how I realized that these beings indeed do not need names many, many times. Many civilizations don't use names. At that moment, I understood why. Because when you connect to somebody, in such a way, an extraterrestrial being who is really integrated into their, you know, their um, self, 
it's so high vibrational and they're so integrated they're so much of themselves so expressing much more of their energy of their true energy that they actually there's no doubt of who they are they actually you can know others energy just by their presence so when I was starting to experience this, um, I fell asleep eventually. But um, that was because I was feeling a little bit of resistance in my body and I actually preferred to meet him in the astral. And when I went out of my body, I saw him and I, you know, I um, kind of like make myself more sure that it was him and that it, we were having like a counterpart connection like a communion together and that it was you know for not just for connection but for hybrid agenda purposes and so we met our souls and after that event i started to remember more of my participation in the hybrid programs and i will see him in the ships and i eventually will have high representations of children i will see uh for example one day i will be on the ship and i will be presented a green skin baby with really big eyes and what i came to understood is that to understand is that they have man, it has mantis DNA, that's why it has a green skin. Other time I was presented a Sakani baby, which was uh, part of the Sasani civilization, because that's just another name to call it. And it was hybrid, uh, you know, it was a hybrid between gray and human DNA. So it had like gray skin and pale eyes. And it, it didn't have hair at the moment. Uh, probably won't have hair in the future neither. I'm not sure because some of them have hair, some not. And I actually also got presented um, two other more children, like hybrid great children by another counterpart, which is another part of my children, uh, which is a great being. And the way that it was, it was on the astral, this was in, in, 20, in 2020 or 20, on this year, I'm not sure. But I, I actually was pulled out of my body and I met him in the astral and we were in my room, we were on my uh, terrace and I saw this great being holding a small baby, like hybrid baby in his arms. And I remember that he even let me touch it and his skin was so soft that I was so, so, it was really, really emotional. It was so beautiful baby and it was such a cute, you know. Uh, child that I was really excited you know <laughs> so <laughs> you know another really interesting aspect to that experience is that the gray was not like the grays that many of us has um, came in contact with in the past when we um, if we think about the negative gray encounters in which there is fear there is like you know a little bit of trauma in the action process, you know, there's a little bit of disconnection from the emotional part, you know. Um, this gray being actually had a lot of human energy. He looked completely great, but he had a really immense heart chakra, you know, because when the hybrids, when the greats started their hybridization program, they also started, they also um, kind of like, started to get like infusions of human DNA to make themselves in a soul level more compatible with the hybrid vessels that they were creating. They needed to make kind of like a link between their very own species as grace and the actual hybrids because when you, when a soul is in a vessel, it's just not the vessel's DNA, what matters, it's the soul DNA. So they actually started receiving and using our own DNA as infusions, like as implants, genetic implants for themselves to kind of like make them more human and kind of like more compatible to those hybrid vessels that they were creating. And not only they were receiving more of this human energy and, you know, embracing and reintegrating back of their human nature to these um, uh Kind of like genetic alterations of using like hybrid like human dna to create the hybrid vessels but actually their markers will as to actually get mutated to by the um the um, participation 
of co-creation of such an agenda with us humans, you know, because all counts and all matters when it comes to DNA genetics, not just like actual genetic alteration, but also experience, because experience is a projection of evolution of consciousness. It's a projection of the energy of consciousness. So when we create for ourselves um, any sort of uh, uh, experience, any sort of like um, story, any sort of like um, reality or agenda, that experience that is actually altering our own very genetic mar markers you know so this was really benefiting for them and as this was really benefiting for, for us and i learned a lot from that experience because i used to think that all grades were totally disconnected from the heart which actually was not true it is um it, these are times in which they are becoming more human with us and we are kind of like converging together in this whole like mission, in this whole um, agenda of becoming like the six hybrid race, which is, you know, the total integration of the negative karmic cycles of energy of the Anunnaki into the new human, what we have been calling in this um in these terms of like ev human evolution, the new human, the homo galactus, you know. So, so it was a pretty emotional experience and pretty, uh, it it'll t really teach me a lot. It was really intense and um, it was amazing to have learned so much about, about where we are heading forward and and the true nature of these experiences, because for so many years we have been afraid of them, we have been scared of reductions, and to the point that we thought that they were negative oriented, that it was something dark, that it was something uh, even Luciferian, which is not, you know, it's just really positive and a great opportunity for humanity, for human evolution. But, you know, um, at the same time, at those years of 2018, 2019 is when I will actually start remembering more of the negative dark side of awakening, which will be, uh, or my, my um, participation in other programs, which is what it's called the secret space program. And so for many years, I've been hearing that, you know, I, I will be hearing um, like, oh, like there is like Nazis, there's like military extraterrestrials and group of extraterrestrials in different um, uh, programs, you know, like different agendas involved with like uh, new world order plans for humanity. And they are part of the lead and they're like the cabal and, and they have bases in the moon, they have bases in Mars. I will hear all of these uh, show of like extraterrestrial, like uh, exopolitic, exopolitical stuff, but I will never be really interested on those things, you know, to be honest, to be personally honest, I never been really interested in exopolitics at the time I was totally um, interested in human evolution, in spirit, in soul, in, in things that were more resonating with uh, my nature, which is um, just that, you know, the positive aspects of this, you know, whole uh, narrative of human evolution. So I really never cared about those things. It somewhat felt like really, really not cool, you know, really not interesting. But for some reason, I will always have these military uh, encounters, like these dreams about me being in Germany back in time, I will see like me being in the past in Germany and I will see the battlefield and I will see how I was supposedly back uh, back in the day on occult societies and and I were at Second World War, part of this whole thing, part of this whole like, you know, part of history. And then I will see myself in that same dream as well regression as dressing in a spacesuit in a spaceship with other group of recruited humans, being told that because of my genetics and my training, I was needed for a really specific task of using and tinkering extraterrestrial uh, technology, learning how to use it, learning how to manipulate it, and actually use uh, reverse engineering to 
again, you know, learn the structure, learn how to use it, learn how to reproduce it even. And so I will say, oh, you know, I will comment like, oh, this has harmful radiation, be careful. You know, I was actually like a scientist there. Like I had knowledge that I did, do not have here. And so I will see the next event that I will see, which was a big wall saying Maria Orsic. And I have heard about Maria Orsic personally. And I, I knew that she was part of this whole like secret space program agendas, like somehow like she was like related, but I didn't know exactly what it was really about that, that kind of like sign of the regression. When I researched about her, I started to see really uh, many things that had that I have personally in common with her, which is that she was a psychic medium, that she was in Nazi Germany in Second World War, and that she was connected to high, you know, secret space programs, which I also am um, here in this century. I'm connected to secret space programs. And she was actually, uh, she actually had connections with Aldebaran, and I have connections to Aldebaran. She was part of a society called Real Society, which I learned in the in in this year that I have a connection with in my past life. You know, so I get to be told by synchronicity and by the universe and by my guides that Maria Orsig was is part of my oversoul. It's kind of like a soul aspect of my oversoul. So it could be interpreted as a past life aspect, but is it is not me. It is I'm not Maria Orsic reincarnated, but she's like a past life aspect. So that's how I eventually will I, I got karmically connected to the secret space program because I had this um life in Nazi Germany, not as her. I'm not sure if I was her, I'm not sure who I was. I just saw myself there. Uh, but I was, I, what I know for sure is that I was part of a tool society, a society that started actually the Nazi German party and real society, which is the society that actually channeled extraterrestrial material on anti-gravity technology, which was used by the Nazi Germans for creating what we call the secret space program. So that's how I actually got dragged into this, um, into this SSP agenda. And what I learned is that they use a form of Nazi based mind control, Nazi trauma based mind control against me, called the Monarch Project, to use me to train me as a psychic super soldier to be on their programs for um, kind of like an agenda of um, recreating Atlantis, like the idea of the Atlantean root race, like the Aryan root race, not in terms of like whether if you're Nordic or not, this is not about, this is not about lineage, like ethnic, like ethnic lineage, you know, they see the Anunnaki uh, lineages, the Aryan energy in all, you know, parts around the world, like many different people around all different countries are part of this program, you know. So when I say Aryan, I don't mean like Nordic, I mean like, like the Atlantean bloodlines back then, in the day, those who were like genetic bloodlines that were in a sense more hybridized with the Anunnaki, the more like the, the root races that were more uh, genetically uh, related to the Anunnaki. Um, so I actually realized how they had this negative agenda with super soldiers being trained. They will also like enslave us in Mars, in the moon, they will trade us for technology. Genetics will also be sold to different ET species in exchange for more technology. And I will start getting these memories, you know, I will start having regressions, having, I even got like regressed by extraterrestrial beings who were, um, who are part of the agenda of disclosure. Because one day when I would go to the bed, I was paralyzed. And at that moment, I, started to be regressed as when I was a child and I will say oh you know these beings they they uh, traumatize me they sexually traumatize me they uh, program me with Nazi symbology and they put me into these programs and I was here and there and I will see all these things you know 
all of my experiences on the moon, of the Mars, I don't remember much about them, you know, but I saw some of how, some of them, of how I've been used as a scientist and a psychic super soldier. And so that's when I started to become aware of the other side of the agenda, as I was saying. So it was a battle for me, and it's still a battle to the day of today. <laughs> Because, of course, the Nazi trauma-based torture, um, trauma-based um, control, mind control agendas are so, um, are so negative, are so dark to me and, and to all, all victims, our targets, that there's just so much, there's just so much that I needed to integrate and to heal within myself to be able to put my word forward, to, you know, put myself out and to continue with my mission. But again, as of course, as in divine timing, I started getting down about, you know, the structure of the universe, the structure of consciousness, and how is that being a victim at first works, because we have to release that, um, that idea of being a victim, which is through emotions, because when we identify ourselves with victims, we always have emotional reaction to that, we have feelings of disempowerment, we have fear, we have trauma, and so I understood how it was okay to be a victim at first, to victimize myself a little bit and become a little bit dramatic about it <laughs> and cry a little bit or, you know, vent a little bit. It was all fine and it was all part of the process. So at first it was fine, you know, but thanks to the downloads that I was receiving and thanks to the channelings that I was getting from my higher mind as a conscious channeler, is when I started to get, and also many other teachers, uh, such as Bashar, that helped me really much in my journey. It's how I eventually got that there is a structure to all of this. Like projects, agendas, it races, all of these narratives are just expressions and projections of our own um, energy, the own energy of our own consciousness. So it's not that we are in projects, we're not in agendas, we're not here in there in narratives. Narratives are just stories created around belief systems. But belief systems are the basic um, structure, the base, the root of all of those things, all of those experiences, all of those um, stories, narratives. So that, that moment is when I had the potential to start my process of integration, again, to become part of this um, human evolution, the becoming of like the Homo Galactus, you know, like be part of ascension process, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful of no longer um, living so much in the old paradigm because um, it was, it was, again, it was okay to feel like I was a victim of these people. But what I actually came to understand is that those are, those souls are actually also source energy. They are actually projection of our own consciousness and they are there. They are put there to trigger us, our negative belief systems, you know? So, so they were part of the other side of the equation. They were put there in order to us get triggered and get aware and uh, kind of like uh, conscious of those aspects of ourselves that were not vibrating uh, in alignment, that were not in integration and that needed to be put back into consciousness, into balance, into integration. So by becoming aware of everything as part of like your own energy being your responsibility is when you make the leap forward to the four density is when you start to become more of a integrated being and person like four dimensional consciousness which are no longer uh, so much oscillating in the play of duality and polarity playing like you're either the big team or you're the viewer or like you're in a drama or there's a whole terrifying narrative and you know the lead is going to you know because those narratives are fine those narratives are are like they are real, they are true, you know? And so we need to understand that just because they, just because we are no victims of them, of this, as I said, um, we, we have to accept everything like this and that, like we have to understand how um, it's part of the play, you know, to have, 
to have been in the story, to have been in the narrative, and to have uh, experienced like uh, duality, uh, we have to still play, we have to still place boundaries, we have to say, no, like I'm aware of your agenda, I'm aware of what you have, you want to create for us, but not fall into the rabbit hole of victimhood again. We have to become stronger than that. We have to become integrated in those aspects and become aware um, that it is our own energy all the, all the time and that there is some structure behind it and that there's just no need, just because there's a narrative, there's no need to become extremely terrified about it, you know? And so we, we need to understand what's going on in terms of the story of mankind, in terms of the story of like human evolution, because that, again, that's part of the play, that's part of the, um, the game in a sense, but not play the game in terms of a game, you know, uh, polarity and unconsciousness. So maintaining a balance between the two, you know, becoming aware of the narratives that they are trying to pull forward for us and that they're trying to, they're creating, you know, co-creating with us, but becoming at the same time aware of the structure so that we can integrate the belief systems behind them and become empowered so that we can create our own reality. That's the key, you know, that we have to attain, that we have to embrace in this um, process of awakening and process of um, ascension in a sense. So these are the things that I have been tuning um, in, that I have been becoming um, and embracing and understanding and, and fully like surrounding to in my journey. Um, and I think that everything is a perfect um, puzzle, that we are all pieces of puzzle, that we all have a perfect shape for a perfect like, you know, um, creation of the bigger picture of what's going on on earth and that the more that we understand more um the more that we understand about ourselves our own experiences and our own uh projections uh on the outside like our own narratives and stories and experiences and belief systems and ideas and the more that we understand our own story our own uh shape in a sense the more that we fit all in the big puzzle that we are in terms of you know as a collective so so it has been really tough years like it was you know it has been five years of intense awakening i have come uh forward with a lot of knowledge um with a lot of like uh, awareness of what's going on with a lot of metaphysical knowledge that i will eventually will put in a book because you know it there's just it's just too much to say all of like like on a of a sudden you know all in one same um place and space and time so i working now many projects you know many in which i'm sharing i'm writing my information i'm organizing it you know in books i am putting it all together so that um everybody sees more the piece of the puzzle that i am so that they can reflect back to them more about their own shape as the other of other piece of the puzzle that they are so this is actually what we're doing right now. We're reflecting that which we are experiencing and agreeing to co-create on a higher level. So it's really important for any of us to be sharing our stories, to be sharing more of who we are, the ideas that we are, so that we in this, you know, total orchestration of, you know, drama and, and revolution of different energies, different, like, you know, uh, beliefs, different uh, energies, we get to collectively come to a point of, you know, convergence and kind of like um, awareness and consciousness, like a point in which we all understand where we are at and we, what we have been collectively agreeing to in many layers, in really um, in many higher levels that we are not aware of in this um, in this dimension, so that we have you know more of that sense of you know knowledge, more of that sense of empowerment, so that we finally can create the better and most preferred reality for ourselves, not just individually, but collectively, you know. 
And so, yeah, that has been my story and so far, and there's much more to it that I will, you know, be sharing. But of course, it, it is, you know, again, it is um, too much to share all in one event, but, you know, um, luckily, unfortunately, I will be putting much more of my work out there in time.